The article that I'll be talking about is called The Endgame to Jackson's Water Crisis, Black Death. The article starts with the author arriving in Jackson and being told that he can't use the faucets for water and he can have as many bottles of water as he wants. It talks about how the water issue has become a full-blown crisis. It mentions that the famous writers in town are treated as royalty, but there are 150,000 people without access to clean drinking water. The people have to line up for water in their cars, as seen in the image above. He speaks of the years of neglect that the city's water system has taken and compares it to the water fountains in the Jim Crow era. He then speaks on how this has been an issue for a while and insinuates that the issue hasn't been solved because of the white conservative supermajority in power at the moment. Saying that it is a race issue and the end goal is black death. I have to agree with part of what he is saying. I do believe that the overall issue is being caused by the white conservative government and the state being in the South still dealing with Jim Crow era difficulties, but I don't know if I can agree that the end goal is black death. Um, now to talk about the author's cred credibility. The author of this article is uh, Ralph Eubanks. He is an author and journalist whose focus is on history and memoirs. He also has a lot of focused writing on race relations and things of that nature. I mean, he is knowledgeable about segregation and I believe him to be a credible source based on his extensive work in writing and journalism on race issues and also just his extensive collegiate um, academia. Um, is this article one-sided? I believe that he does look at both sides, though he does seemingly only look at it from the side of the civilians in Jackson, which in this case is really the only one that matters. So I don't believe that the other side needs to be given much weight anyway. Um, how is this story tailored towards its target demographic? Well, it's tailored towards an audience that is willing to see the flaws of what's happening in Jackson. It's tailored like that because it is openly criticizing the government and comparing it to the Jim Crow era. It is also an article that I found on CNN, which is a fairly liberal. The people who are reading it are more likely to agree with Mr. Eubanks because they already hold the same views that it may be racism that is causing some of the issues. Um, so is there any bias present in this article? I think this article, I don't think overall think that this article is biased, but if I had to say that there was, I would say that I think that this article has some confirmation bias. He's already written a lot about racial, racial issues, so he already has a pre-existing thought that race, there is a race issue behind this overall thing. And um, the other type of bias that could be present is spin bias because he's only writing about his viewpoint and not everybody else's such as like someone who actually lives in Jackson and like even people in the local government. And we learned about both of those in the week six Monday PowerPoint. And with this in mind, I still don't believe that his article is overall biased. I believe the message is pretty clear and not biased.